Welcome to Linda's Corner. My name is Linda Bjork, and today we're going to be talking about ways to heal our marriages. I'm delighted to welcome special guest Suzanne Lindsay. Suzanne is the author of Getting Back to Our Happily Ever After. She is also a life coach who is trained in multiple modalities, including emotion code, sight K, and MER. Suzanne is also my sister. And if you've watched any of my videos or heard me speak on other podcasts about my story of needing to be rescued, this is the sister who rescued me. And I am super grateful and excited to have her as a guest today. You can learn more about her book and find it on Amazon, and I'll include a link in the show notes. Welcome, Suzanne. I'm so glad that you could join with me today. Gosh, Linda, thank you for that sweet introduction. Bring tears to my eyes. <laughs> I know. As I'm thinking about kind of the history of between you and me as we are on this journey to help people, and sometimes you don't realize that the people that you're going to be helping is someone that's close to you. And when you helped me, you had absolutely no idea that I was in need of rescuing. So I just really appreciate you moving forward and doing the things that you felt were right, even though you didn't know who it was for. So that means a great deal to me. Now, you are trained in so many things, and you and I have a history together that we could talk about a lot of different things. But today, we're going to talk about marriage. And marriage is something that is hard. It's harder than you thought. It's a little different than the Disney movies where you say happily ever after. And then, you know, you just ride off into the sunset because we keep living after that riding off into the sunset. And sometimes we look at ourselves and we think, this is hard. And you look at other people and think, well, theirs is so easy. Maybe there's something wrong with me. You know what I mean? Because it's kind of our, our ch challenges, our struggles are often hidden. And I know you've been married for nearly 40 years or somewhere around there. And people yes. thought, you know, hey, there is a couple that really has it all together. So was it super easy for you? And so that's why you wrote this book. So everyone could be perfect, like your journey was perfect. <laughs> you know, isn't it true that the reason we've learned so much is because of the trials we go through? Um, it's our hardships, it's our challenges, it's what it's those hard things in life that make us the best teacher because we've been through it. <laughs> and once you've been through something and you've experienced something, you want to share it because um, as they call it like the law of the freeway, if there is uh, uh, bumps in the road and you've hit them, you want to tell people behind you, avoid these bumps. And so that is why I wrote the book, Getting Back to Our Happily Ever After, because I worked very hard to heal my marriage. And it's wonderful to be happily married again. <laughs> wonderful. And that I think is super important to recognize because sometimes we feel that where we are is the only way that it can continue. So if I started out happy, and we started out in love and then things got hard and, and maybe I, we don't like each other, then this is the new place where we have to stay forever and ever and ever. And many people think the only way out is I, I, I got to jump off this ship and I got to find somebody who's going to be a better match for me. And, and what we would really like to, people to understand is that we can heal our marriages, that if we're not in a happy, good place, it doesn't mean that you have to stay miserable forever after, right? Absolutely. You know, I, I remember I almost had to hit rock bottom. I had to almost hit rock bottom um, before I was humble enough and open enough to actually receive the guidance and direction I needed to learn the things that I needed to learn to be able to change. And the beautiful thing about my journey is I, I have to admit, I blamed my husband for everything. Obviously. I thought it was his fault. His, our marriage was hard because it was his fault. If he would just this, if he would just stop that, if he would just, and because I kept myself in a state of it's his fault, I was completely stuck because that was life. And I couldn't change him. And I tried and tried and tried. But you can't change other people. 
as much as you try. And I knew that. And so I got to this place of despair where I just felt like I, I can't do this. I can't do this another 30 years. I can't survive like this. And when I was that humble and that seeking for answers, I was ready. And then the Lord could just present to me the, the, the mentor, the trainer I needed to teach me the principles that I needed to learn that for my life to change, I need to change. For my marriage to improve, I need to improve. And by taking that accountability on myself, by taking that accountability, it was freedom. It was freedom because I was able to realize I'm not a victim of circumstance. I'm not in this miserable marriage because I'm stuck here. It's I have something I can do. And it was in learning that my thoughts triggered my emotions, which triggered my actions and my words, which triggered, which became the results of misery, right? Those, those cycles just kept feeding each other. And so by learning, I had control over my thoughts. I could manage my thoughts, change my thoughts, which would change my emotions. Quit being triggered so much. Change the way I saw my husband. Change the way I thought about my husband, which changed the way I treated my husband, which changed the way he treated me. And by me taking accountability in our marriage for my happiness, I was able to transform our marriage. And my husband has thanked me over and over and over again. He, he wasn't so happy with the way things were himself, but he just thought, okay, this is marriage. Marriage is hard. He just didn't know how desperate I was. And I'm just so grateful I got to that desperate place. And so if there are people out there that are just desperate, discouraged, you know, that's a good place to be. Because once you're in that place of despair, you're teachable. And I had to be humble and teachable because who wants to think it's your fault? You know, <laughs> you know, that's huge. <laughs> and I wanted to touch on that point because it is so much easier to say it is his fault. I am miserable because of this. And you can list out so many examples. Well, he did this. He did this. He did this. And as you walked through the steps of, I changed my thoughts. I changed the way I saw him. I changed this. And then as you kept going, you said, and it changed the way that he treated me. And that to me is so huge because what I would really like to kind of focus on today, if it's okay, is the power that one person has to affect a relationship because there are two people in a relationship and many couples, maybe one spouse would like to go to counseling and the other count, the other spouse is like, don't, I'm not going to have anybody tell me what to do. No. No, no, or, or it's too embarrassing, or it's this, or it's that, or the other. So if one person is interested in making a change, then we can make a change. And so that's, that's huge because that gives me power. It's a that's mixed bag mean. because I also have to say, maybe some of it's my fault. <laughs> and Nobody wants to go there. So, so much easier to blame. Blame then justifies you in sometimes not so nice of uh, reactions because you feel justified. You feel justified that, that, that you maybe responded negatively or harshly because it was their fault that they upset you. And, and that blame and justification, it just keeps you trapped. Because you're not accessing the power you have within you. We have power within us to create the life that we want. That's the biggest, most amazing lesson I've ever learned is that I have the power to create the happiness in my life I desire. And I, you know, I, I, um, I appreciate President Nelson's quote. He talks about, Happiness has little to do with the circumstances of life and everything to do with the focus of our life. And you talked about, and you brought up again, as we focus on what's wrong, what's wrong, what he did wrong, what he did wrong, what he did wrong, it grows. It just grows. 
But when the focus shifted to me, okay, what can I change within me? And, and, and the focus shifted to trying to see what was right. What was right with my husband? What was good? There were so many things, so many things. He is such a good man. But when I changed my focus to what's good, what's right, that grew and that embellished and that created the happiness. So what we choose to focus on is everything to do with our happiness. Wow. Okay. So let's say I'm in a spot where all I can see, all all I can see are faults. All I can see are flaws. All I can see is misery. How do I get started into turning that around? You know, when you mentioned there are so many good things, sometimes we forget. We probably saw all of those good things, or we wouldn't have chosen this person in the first place. So, but, but, but I, I've forgotten all of that. And now I'm in this place of, of, of blame and justification. How do I get started? So the very first step is to, is gratitude. The very first step is to be able to shift your focus, you know, and I, I just prayed, you know, Heavenly Father, help me see the good in my husband. Cause I'm exactly what you said. I could not see any of it. I was so blinded. I was so full of garbage and negativity. And so it was like, help me see. And so I made a challenge. I, in, in, in being mentored, one of the challenge was look at for the good. And so I would make it a note and an effort that I was going to pick out what he did good that day and what I was grateful for him for doing that day. And at first, it was hard. (laughs) I just have to say that. And it wasn't that he wasn't doing good. It was that I was so stuck in my negative way of thinking that it was almost painful to focus on the good. It was like, oh, but but I could see it and I could find it. Oh, my goodness. He worked all day and he worked so hard. And then he, he provides, he provided me with this or that, or he helped me with this or that. And as I picked those out, it was, it was my acknowledging him in his good and what he did that caused him to shift. So every day I would do two things. I would thank him for something he did and tell him how much I appreciated him. There's the gratitude for something he did. And he just lit up. It was like, it was like, you're welcome. And after I did that for over a period of time, he just started to shift. And then he started to want to do things to get that praise <laughs> because it made him feel so good. <laughs> and and so I would just say, very first thing we can do, shift our focus. Shift it to what they did right and what you appreciate because they are serving you all day. They uh, They are. They're serving all the time, just like we serve our family all the time. It's always nice to be told thank you, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. And you you not only wrote it down, or thought about it, then you verbalized it. And you acknowledged to him your gratitude and your appreciation. And I think that that's beautiful. Say one more thing. I also wrote it down. So I thought about it. I verbally expressed it. And I wrote it in my journal. Reemphasize, reemphasize, reemphasize. Do you see what I'm saying? Just really, I beat it in my mind. <laughs> Just beat it in there. And as you s- saw more, you experienced more. And I, s- the more I looked for it, the more I found. It's there. You just have to look for it. You know, you, you find what you're looking for. I promise. It's just the way life works. Whatever you're looking for, you'll find it. Isn't that interesting? Okay, so just as a general rule, what do you think that a husband wants? I mean, I mean, you you mentioned the gratitude. Is that <laughs> is that going to be universal, or did that only work in your relationship? I I think it's universal, and I think women need it too. But there's something. There's a difference. There's masculine and feminine energy. We all have both, right? We all have both. I have a lot of masculine energy in me. I know that. But men, as a general rule, have more masculine energy, and women have more feminine energy. And masculine energy, I, I, I related it to they really want to feel like a hero. They really do. 
they want to feel like they're taking care of their family and they're providing and that they're appreciated and they're looked up to and and it makes them feel empowered. And a wife can empower their husband, give him power by one, thanking him, expressing gratitude. Second thing, <laughs> it may seem really simple, but it's not to criticize him. Because if a hero is criticized and corrected and told he's not doing it right, why would he ever want to act like a hero? He wouldn't. So by thanking them for what they do do right and keeping your mouth quiet when they don't do things exactly as you would like them to, <laughs> then it helps them feel like a hero, then they want to act like one, which is what my husband did. He just stepped up to the plate and he became more of the hero in my life that I wanted him to be. I mean, when we got married, it's like you said, happily ever after. I was marrying Prince Charming. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I was doing. And by being critical, I just tore him down. So why try? In fact, he would he would sometimes tell me, I will never make you happy. So I don't even want to try. I mean, that's a painful thing to hear. That is, that is hurtful. <laughs> but I could see his point, you know, after, as, as I grew and as I progressed, I've learned so much about building a person's worth. And, you know, the things we're talking about are done with our mouth. It is the, the thanking versus the criticizing, the condemning, the nagging. And I don't know why it seems to come so naturally to want to go there. We, we want to correct. We want to, uh, you know, tell them how to do it right. I have something to say about that. I talked about feminine and masculine gifts. And a feminine gift that we have is a gift of perfection. When we look at someone, we have this gift of seeing, and I want you to think about this, Women have a gift of being able to beautify, improve, and perfect things. That is a gift we have. And it's a beautiful, wonderful gift. Many women get caught up in per being perfectionists, which can be damaging to ourselves. But it is a gift we have. And if we will use it wisely, it's a wonderful thing. But the problem is because we have this gift of perfection, we look at our spouse and we want to perfect them. And we think we're helping, you know. We really think we're helping because if I help perfect him, he'll be a better person. And won't, won't that be wonderful? You know, he'll feel, he'll feel like he's progressed. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I realized it was my, it's, it's this desire to perfect that causes us to be critical. And it can be damaging not only to our husband, to our children, to any relationship. That gift of perfection has to be used with ourself and with Maybe the projects we're doing, the things we're creating. We can put all the perfection we want into the things that we're trying to create and beautify and make wonderful in this world. But we should never apply that gift on a human being. That interferes with their agency. And you talked earlier about power, about how having, uh, being appreciative empowers a spouse. And the concept of power, I think, is often misunderstood. We often think that means power over someone, authority over someone. And so thinking of it in that mind, I don't want to give someone else power because I don't want to be subservient. But as we're partners and side by side, that's different. It's yes, I want an excellent teammate who's going to be powerful. Because it's not let me, over me. Yeah, let me just say, when I talk about power, it's like strength and happiness and energy. I, I work with emotions. As a body code practitioner, I help people let go of negative emotions. Because negative emotions weigh a person down and make them miserable. So if, if your husband is weighed down because he feels like he's not the hero and he's got negative emotions about himself and that you feel bad about him, He's weighed down into those heavy negative emotions, which are powerless. There's no power there. It drains a person of power. When we feel true power, it's a power of happiness, of joy, of fulfillment. And, and who wants to be married to a happy husband who feels fulfilled and who loves life? Me. <laughs> <laughs> and who wants to 
be married to a husband who is frustrated and angry and feels and, and upset all the time because they're not feeling good about themselves. So I'm grateful you brought that up because it is not a fact of me trying to build up a person so they have power over me. It's so they have inner power within themselves to be happy. And likewise, the husband can do things to empower their wife. Oh, let's talk about that. What do women want? <laughs> you know, and this is kind of tricky because in the world we're taught women can do everything. You know, women should be able to do everything. That's the mindset of today. Yes. And it's probably very true. We are, we are capable of doing so many things. But the problem is... I don't want to be that... expected to do everything. <laughs> I don't it's, either. It's overwhelming. But it, it is. But women have this gift, when, beyond just perfectionism, they have this gift of being connected to everything. We, I mean, we can connect and be aware of the house and the laundry and the dinner and the children and homework and, and PTA and whatever, okay? We're aware of everything and we're connected to everything. That's very... Um, that is a very draining, right? On a person. <laughs> it's kind of draining. So um, a woman is so aware of everything that has to be done around them, whereas a man has this gift of laser focus. That's a hero gift, right? Laser focus, you know, Superman. So they're focusing on one thing at a time. A woman is aware of myriads of things at a time that need to be done. And it's very helpful for a husband to ask their wife, honey, what can I help you with? What do you need help with? Because she has this plethora of things in her mind that need to be done. The husband thinks he's the hero of the day if he fixes the sink or takes out the garbage. And, and those are great things. He, but he's serving in the way he wants to serve. He thinks he's fixing something he wants to serve. But maybe that's not what the wife needs right now. Right now, the wife needs the husband to take care of the baby who's crying or to uh, help with dinner. Or something that she is feeling the weight of right now that she needs help with. And, and the husband thinks he's helping by doing what he thinks is awesome. I can't tell you how many projects my husband did thinking he was being my hero. But he wasn't helping where I needed help. So being able to communicate and say, honey, I need help with this. And that's how you can help me the most. That's that's a wonderful thing. So helping a woman with with what she needs help with. The other thing is, because we're so full of emotions, sometimes we just have to talk. We just have to dump, right? They say women have to say a lot more words than men. And it's true. We've got all these things, all these emotions. One of our gifts is to be emotional. We are motivated by emotions, by our love for people, by our passion for people. We're motivated by emotions. We feel, women feel a lot. And when we get so consumed with so many feelings going on in our head, sometimes we just need to talk about it. And a husband, as a hero, I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but they'll come in and say, well, why don't you just, you shouldn't feel that way. Just stop feeling that way. They just want to fix it. <laughs> you know, That'll fix the problem. Just stop. You can't just stop because you feel that way. If a husband would rather say, oh, gosh, I, that's, that's, that's hard. That's got to be hard to feel that way. And just listen. They don't have to fix it. They don't have to understand why you feel that way. They don't have to know. All they have to do is just listen. And that validates a woman. You know, it validates, it makes them feel loved. It makes them feel appreciated. It's like, gosh, she cares about how I feel. And once we feel like we're cared for, that empowers us. We feel safe and we feel, we feel, gosh, He's such a good husband. <laughs> you know, it's just such a, it just brings so much love. So if they can just listen, don't fix the problem. Help us with something we need help with. We just feel, gosh, they love me. Wow. Okay. And we need to feel loved. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So now I'm thinking from the perspective of one person trying to make a difference, and I am trying to get my needs met. I love that you're working within the natural tendencies of, he wants to be the hero. He wants to fix something. And in his mind, he's doing it. But what I can do is use my words and say, this is what I need help with. And then they can be excited that it's something that you needed. And then I can say, I can again use my words and say, I, I don't want to be fixed. 
I just want to be heard right now. So these are some things that I can do to help me get my needs met so that I have power again. Because if, I, if I'm if i hoping that my husband is going to guess correctly what I need, <laughs> the chances of me getting it are pretty slim. I have to say, another gift of women is that we're very intuitive. We can look at a person and kind of get a feel for how they, because we're connected to everybody, right? We can kind of get a feel, oh, they had a bad day. Or, you know, we have a feel, we have intuition. And so we kind of know what the person needs. That is not a masculine gift. I mean, some men may have that gift, but it is not. So it seems like women, we kind of think we can mind read. I mean, we kind of can. (laughs) We can kind of tell, okay, this person needs help with this. That is not a masculine gift. And I, I didn't realize that. I thought my husband had should be able to do what I could do. And he just didn't have that gift. I had to learn to appreciate our differences, our differences in masculine and feminine, to appreciate, you know, he has these gifts. I have these gifts. And I have to have understanding that he doesn't, he doesn't have my gifts. But I can appreciate him for his. I think if you can just do that, it would be huge. Sometimes huge. we think we have to be the same in order to get along. And it's absolutely okay to be different pieces of the puzzle that fit together. To make a whole. You have you put these awesome gifts together, you put these awesome gifts together, and now you have a beautiful whole. It's, I, I look at it as two eyes seeing. Have you ever tried to drive with just one eye? Uh, your yeah, you depth, both. <laughs> <laughs> your depth perception is not there. You could easily get in an accident. You could easily hurt somebody. So just one, one perspective is dangerous. You get two perspectives. You get two eyes. You have three D. You can see things for what they are. You have better perspective. You're less likely to hurt somebody. You're seeing things from two angles. A man sees things from one angle. And a woman sees things from another angle. You put those together and you can be a powerful whole in seeing the best way to handle situations in life, the best way to raise your kids, the best way to handle problems, because you're seeing it from two angles and you're not going to get in an accident. You're not going to make mistakes as much as if you tried to do it on your own. Using the analogy of two eyes creating depth perception is so um deeply perceptive because usually what we say is this is one perception this is the other one which one's right (laughs) instead of saying well let's look at both and and use them both together to get that uh, the depth to be able to get a deeper understanding because uh, sometimes maybe this eye is dominant or this eye is dominant and that's what's needed for a particular situation yeah. Yeah. I've, I, in my book, I focus a lot on being one and how my misperception of being one was that I thought we had to be the same. We had to be on the same page. We had to be doing, thinking the same, doing the same. And I didn't realize that one meant whole. It meant complete. And, and that, that, that learning to be one is, is, is learning to be a team and working together with our gifts. And that's what being one means. It, it's something, again, sometimes our understanding, our, what we expect is, is very important to be able to make those clarifications because we can even use the same words and say, as, as a married couple, we should be one. And you think, okay, one means we think the <laughs> same, we do the same, we are. But if one means we are whole, we are complete, we complement each other. It's, uh, it's tricky when even our words can betray us. So to have that depth of understanding and to open our eyes a little bit and soften our hearts and open our minds can help create something beautiful. And it's not just the benefit of one person, it benefits both. And that's so huge. Is there anything else that you want to make sure that we cover today before we close? Well, I just think that if we can just realize we have limiting beliefs within ourselves, 
when you just talked about that, my limiting belief was a definition of one is this, where it was a false definition. And if we can open our minds and broaden our perception of truth and look for truth, how can I, how, how, what is really going on here? Is there anything I can do to improve things? And, and, the, and the biggest thing, Linda, is accountability and ownership. Accountability and ownership. It, once I took accountability and ownership for, for my happiness, and once I realized I have the power within me to create change, I did it. And, and I didn't know I had that before. So if anything, I would just like to encourage people to realize they have power within them. This power of choice, this power of agency, this power to choose. How am I going to respond to this? What am I going to do about this? We are not victims of circumstance. We have the power within us to change our lives for the better. Yes, we do. And I'm so grateful for that. And thank you so much for visiting with me today and sharing your wisdom. Oh, thank you for letting me come. And thank you for the amazing, wonderful leader and inspirational person that you are out in this world. I am just, I just look up to you so much, Linda. Thank you, Suzanne. In closing, I'd like to share a quote by Wayne Dyer. He said, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Today, I invite you to become aware of the way you look at things, particularly the way you look at your partner and your relationship, and recognize your power to change things for the better. See you next time on Linda's Corner. Thanks for listening. Please share and subscribe to help us reach new listeners. And if you'd like to heal your life from the inside out, there is a free video series at hopeforhealingfoundation.org. Just click on the free stuff tab. I also invite you to grab a copy of one of my books, like Crushed, A Journey Through Depression, and You Got This, an action plan to calm fear, anxiety, worry, and stress. See you next time on Linda's Corner.